I'm looking into my garden to see what vegetables I can get. And a certain person, as I'm leaning over, jumps up on top of me. <laughs> so, uh, there we go. He's off now. I'll show you what I was looking at. I'm looking at my squashes, which are doing really well. These are my beans climbing up over there. The squashes are doing so well, they've created a huge squash that I'm going to have to eat. And there's another one. And then through there, there's more squashes. Huge. They're almost like the size of pumpkins. I don't know what I'm going to do. They've grown so big and so fast with our little bit of rain. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have to pick those and do something with them. And the cat is back on top of me again, or was, purring like crazy, wanting attention as I'm trying to look at my squashes. A big roast squash for lunch. Crack it open and then slather it in butter. I think that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I'm right in the middle of the, my little raised bed. Oh God. This jumped from the beam overhead down onto my shoulder. He's a very determined gardening cat. Are you gonna get back up? There we go. See? A very determined gardening cat. <laughs> Aren't you? There we go. The gardening cat. Any chance he gets, he's jumping on my shoulder. So I've picked two of these. I'll have one for lunch. Then my purple sprouting broccoli is being played on. Puppy who's amused by the cat up above. Get out of my purple sprouting broccoli. My baby broccoli. Oops, it's starting to rain. I better go. I've got a tiptoe back through here. I've got another squash to pick. There's a small one there. Anyway, oh dear, it's starting to rain. Icky poo. Well, I've got lunch anyway. So this is very big. I think you're supposed to eat them when they're a lot smaller, but I'll find out. This is my first time doing one of these kind of squashes. So I'm gonna cut it in half and put it on a baking tray and put it in this oven and bake it. So we'll see what happens. I'm gonna try that now. I've gotta use two hands to chop it, slice it in half. Okay, sliced in half. I didn't quite slice them evenly. This one is a bit bigger half than this. But when you're cooking in the aga, the back of the oven is hotter than the front. So I put the big one at the back and the smaller one at the front. Now, I'll leave them in there for 20 minutes and just see what they're like. They might take longer or shorter, but we're gonna find out. This is an experiment. That's the hot baking oven. A tired puppy. It's been about 30 minutes. I'm gonna see how these are doing. Oh, steamy, steamy, steamy. They might not be ready yet. Do the fork test. Nope, nope, not ready yet. Though that might let some steam out. Okay, put these back in without disturbing the sleeping pup. Okay. We're getting close, but not quite. Everybody's snoozing. Snoozing. Yeah. <laughs> so I think these are cooked. The fork goes in really, really easily. Yeah, very, very easily. So what I'm gonna do is spoon out all of this and mash it with butter. Ooh, yum, 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 yum. And fry some eggs. Oh, yum, yum, yum. So here I've sliced and diced them up and I'm gonna scoop them out. There's a lot of liquid in, so I'm gonna, actually I probably should use a runcible spoon rather than this one because there's so much liquid 
and I just want the flesh. So I'm loading it into here after I've cut it all out. So, yes, a runcible spoon would have been better. Instead, I'm just draining it off and putting it in there. So, oh, look at that. Oh, look at all that. And then I'm gonna mash it together. I think I've emptied these out. I could almost bake these and serve my lunch in them, but as it's just me, because the, how stable is it? Yeah, one could almost. Look at that excess liquid in there. And then here. And they're in all that fluid in there is from these um, squashes. So I'm gonna mash that up with butter, salt, and pepper now. So the butter is in there, and the salt and the pepper. And I'm vaguely thinking of putting a little vinegar in out of curiosity. Anyway, melting the butter. This is the frying side of the aga. Melting the butter for my eggs. So I hold my eggs in the handle. I always do this. Anyway, here we go. One. Two. And then I put the eggshells in my eggshell container. There we go. I've got to crunch those up sometime soon. I feed those back to the hens. Anyway. There's, what I love about fresh eggs is they stand so proud up above. Okay, so that, put a lid on that, and then I'm going to mix this up. And I think I might put some of this vinegar in. Whoops, this is a really delicious vinegar that I love. So I think I'm going to put a little bit in just to flavor it a little bit differently. There we go. Now, oh, this is gonna be yummy. I can smell it being yummy already. The eggs are going yum, 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 yum. Okay, whoops, I think those are about done. Yeah, those are about done. I'm gonna grab some of this. Take the fork out. Yum, yum, yum. There we go. I didn't take the seeds out. It's all there. Now, that. Put the butter and juices. There we go. That. It's a very pale looking meal, but I think that is going to be delicious. All homegrown except for the salt, pepper, and vinegar. And butter. Well, the butter is locally sourced farm grown butter. So here we go. Let's give it a lash. So I lashed on a bit of pepper and uh, Let's see what this is like. Pepper with the egg and the squash. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Look at all this juice. Oh, if only I ate bread. I dip bread in this juice. Oh, this is so good. Mix that with the squash. Oh, look at that, lovely and juicy. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, that is so good.